We're going to buy the five most expensive tools on Banggood and find out if they're any good. And this video is brought to us by Squarespace. So we are at the site. We are on their woodworking section of the site. We are going to sort by price. We'll go high to low. We're going to avoid battery operated tools and non woodworking tools like a chainsaw. A chainsaw is not a woodworking tool. Very first thing right off the bat is this router lift at $319 and two cents. It's going to be as simple as add it to the cart. And there we go. So we got item one, a table. Is the table a woodworking tool? Nah. Let's get some cool stuff. So we got some chainsaws and some drills we don't need. Look right here, right here. This is exactly what I'm looking for. A miter gauge, $125.99. It looks really good. It, it does. It do that looks high end. So add it to the cart. Well, we missed this track saw. Let's get this. It's a, it's a track for, for a cir circular saw. Yeah. All right, $135, way cheaper than anything that, that I have. Do you At, need the saw for it? Yeah, I think you just use any kind of like any circular saw so we can take our, our little DeWalt and use it on there. Do you have a track? I do not, so can I have it when you're done? You can have it when I'm done. Sick, bro. All right, add the cart. More drills and, what's up with drills and chainsaws? Yeah, I, I see the chisels. Or those lathe tools. They're, they're, or they're, they're, they're lathe tools. Do you need lathe tools? <laughs> no. Okay. So let's avoid the lathe tools because they're probably really good. And more track saw stuff. Oh, right here. This is what I'm talking about. A drill guide, $94.98. I like that. Let's add that to the cart. This is the stuff that I'm looking for. Like, is this stuff cool? So let's add that to the cart. That is five things. Is that for pocket holes? That is for, it's a dowling jig and it looks high end. It does. I guess anytime you have red anodized aluminum, <laughs> it's going to look fancy. <laughs> All right. That's five things. Let's just, let's, let's just look and see if there's anything else cool. Why is there so many of these little mini chainsaws? All right. Let's get the pocket hole jig. Here's a fun fact. Craig did not invent pocket holes. Pocket holes and pocket hole jigs were being used way before Craig made their jig. So we're gonna add this to the cart. That's, I mean, I said five things. You're getting a bonus. One more thing. Uh, these look cool. These are little uh, roller feeders. All right, let's get that. These are things that I could actually use in the shop. You're spending a lot of money. Uh, well, let's see. Let's, uh, let's, let's add this up. Ooh, okay. So it looks like the Dowling jig is a pre-order. Let's get rid of that because it's a pre-order. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the pocket hole jig. All right, delete. We got five items. Proceed to checkout. I think Banggood is a legit... It's, I think it's a legit place. It's like the Amazon for, for China. Let's enter our digits. All right, payment successful. $749.60. I sure hope this video is successful. Now we wait for those items to arrive. It says this is gonna take a few weeks. So let's just, let's just wait. We could probably do other things in the meantime, right? All the packages have arrived. Unlike the Facebook ad videos that we did earlier, this seems to be a pretty legit website. I got tracking information for all the packages. Everything arrived within 10 days. So I think we are gonna have a good time trying out some new tools. Daniel, which one should we open first? Oh man. Let's start with the small one. Let's see what we have here. Package is in good condition. What is this? What is this? <laughs> did I order that? I don't know what this is. After reviewing the footage, I did buy this. I just have a very short memory, I guess. So uh, these are rolling feeders and it has, a, it just help guide material through a router or table saw. So let's go install them, see if they work. They feel high quality. Weird that I didn't know what they were off the bat, but I mean, that looks, that looks quality as AF. The nice thing about this is it comes with the bigger T-Track nuts as well as the smaller one. Over here on my router table, I needed the bigger ones for this track and then the smaller ones for this track. So right off the bat, I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here. You got one lock here, that is your pivot, and then another lock here, which is the position. So I'm gonna, I can lock that down here. And then same with 
this one. I'll set my board in here and I'll set this first one first. Oh, what I've just noticed is that the rollers are angled, so it's gonna pull it towards the fence. I don't know if that is visible, but these little rollers there, they're, they're angled. It just automatically pulls it towards the fence. That's pretty cool. So then we can set this one, lock that down. It works really good. The two things that I wish were a little different, and this is just me being me, I wish this particular roller was a little bit lower. So anything under three quarters of an inch falls below that roller. Also, I wish one of them was a little bit longer and maybe it's just the placement of my track. I just wish this was a little bit longer, like a short one and a longer one. The reason you would want these is for nice clean cuts. It's gonna keep your board up against the fence. Plus it allows you to use a push block, keeping your fingers away from the nasty bit. Would I recommend it? Is it useful? Heck yeah. Like we done with the Facebook ads video, we're gonna rank everything from least recommended to most recommended. For now, I'll just set this right here in the middle until we have something to compare it to. Continuing with the small boxes and we'll work our way up is this little guy right here and I already know what this is. This is going to work great in the other shop that I'm setting up where I have minimalist tools. My Patreon members know what I'm talking about. This is the drill guide. Got some good action on there. Like you know I like good action. <laughs> Daniel was about to say the same thing. So just like the roller guides, this did not come with any instructions. So I didn't know what these extra pieces were for. So I had to go back to the website and look at the photos. And it's got some cool like guides so you could drill holes repeatedly from an edge of a surface. So that's cool. I have the Rockler version of this and I'll say right off the bat that uh, that one is definitely higher quality. It's definitely heavier and more heavy duty than this. But this, um, I've got no problems with the way this looks or feels. I'm just saying the Rockler one feels a little bit more high quality. We can't make any judgments until we actually use it. So let's drill some holes. After we drill some holes, we'll pound some pegs. Absolutely nothing sexual about that. So the first thing that I noticed about this compared to the Rockler one is since the Rockler version of this is so much heavier, you don't have to hold it down. So this, now the drill is, is heavier than this thing and without holding it down, it wants to tip. Something to keep in mind, something that we can all work around, but there's, there you go. It's, I, what I'm trying to say is there you go. These little guides, just screw right in there. So once you put these little wings on there, it does stabilize it. And then doesn't tip over. And then these little wings on here allow you to set guides so you can do repeated drill operations along the edge and you're gonna get perfect placement along the edge every single time. So there's this guy right here. So I'll slide this on. It can go on multiple ways, like this. Like, I don't know why I like that, <laughs> but like this, and then like this, and then lock that down. And then that will always register along the board there. And then it's got two more little edge guides that slide right on to here. And then you can lock that in place. And then that moves up and down, like so. It doesn't lock real good, it still wants to slide. Have an edge guide there, have an edge guide here. I can flip this up when not in use. Actually, that actually, it still hits the, am I doing that wrong? I thought this was made to flip up and down, but even when it's flipped up, it's still, the very bottom of that hits on there. I don't know if it's me doing it wrong or if that's bad design. Maybe it's not meant to flip up. There's no instruction, so I'm just figuring this out. It's still a good stop. I think that could have been designed better. That's all. So let's drill some holes. So we'll put a bit in there and it does come with a little chuck. I can lock it down, drill my drill on here. And now it also has a depth stop. I wish those knurled knobs were a little bit bigger. Kind of tiny is what it is. And we'll drill some holes.
All right, that worked pretty good. It's got one other feature on here, and then I'm just take my drill off so it's not awkward to hold. It's got uh, these two little screws right here. Up top is just kind of a placeholder. If I take these off and put it on the bottom, I can then use those two pins to find the center of a board to drill in the exact center on the top. Does it work? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? That's tough. If you have the money, I would suggest getting the Rockler one. It's a little bit higher quality. It's a little bit beefier and user friendly. If you're on a budget, this will definitely do. I think I'm going to move the roller guides into the number two spots and put this at number three. I've actually had these packages for, I don't know, three weeks. I thought I was waiting on one more. Turns out two of them were in this particular package. So they all did come right away. Although this one came all kind of, it looked like, Daniel asked if my dog chewed it up. Um, but I think, it, I think everything is cool. It is coming from China, so that's a, that's a long way. That's like, that's like 200 miles. Ah, yes. I very, very, very curious about this one. This is the miter gauge. How can you tell? <laughs> you just read that, it says miter gauge. This one was actually packaged pretty nice. The first of the three to come with instructions. What did I pay for this? That feels good. That feels really good. Daniel, hold on to that. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's heavy. That's nice. Yeah. That is yeah, that's solid. That's not that's not a piece of plastic. That's not hollow. That is, Jeez. Uh, I mean, you could hit your grandma pretty good with this. <laughs> Probably knock your grandma out in less than three hits with this. I got a feeling this is going to be highly recommended. And the main piece of this, which oh, wow. yeah, that is steel. That that's not that's not aluminum. That's stainless steel right there. Oh wow. Yeah. Did you say you were gonna give me this one? <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's a lot easier when you're ordering. Yeah, I kind of like this one. Out of the box, it's a little wiggly in the miter slot. So step one is to set the width here using these screws and the heavy ass handle. And this goes on here. Can lock that down. I got it all assembled here. You're gonna notice this weird little gap in the fence right here. This is for use at the router table and it has a little stop where you can make little tenons and finger joints. I typically don't use a miter gauge at the router table, but that is an added feature with this particular miter gauge. I will probably add a longer plastic piece that comes out and extends past the blade. This is something I do with all my miter gauges. So as I'm running it through, it pushes the cutoff piece past the blade so that cutoff piece doesn't hit the back of the tooth, come up and hit me in the face. I like my face. Some of you like my face. Most of you might not like my face, but some of you do. I like my face. Daniel likes my face. No, I, want... I don't. So this is the miter gauge I typically use. This is the Jessam. Very high quality, very expensive. I like it. My one gripe about this is the front of this is not long enough. So I only get nine and a quarter inches of uh, cut between the blade and the fence before it falls out of the track. This one is slightly longer and I get an extra quarter of an inch. I get nine and a half inches. Not even worth mentioning really. It's all together. It was not square out of the box. So there are adjustments screws to make it square. And then you can also square up the fence this way forward and back. So it is square this way. It has different detents. I believe that's what you call that. So you can stop and do different angles. The one thing this doesn't have that a lot of other miter gauges will have is an extension. So you could slide the fence out so it's even longer and have your stops there. It does not have that. Uh, that's, a, that's another nicety. That's one of those things like I don't use very often, but when you need it, it's there. Um, but usually for something longer, I'm gonna use a sled anyway. So it all really depends on your workflow. A lot, that's the crazy thing about woodworking is there's so many freaking jigs, there's so many freaking tools because there's so many ways to do everything and there's so many different budgets. So uh, right off the bat, 
I'm happy, I'm super happy with the quality of this. So we're gonna make a couple cuts and then we're going to set this to 45 and make a couple more cuts and see what happens. So we'll switch this to 45, loosen those two guys. The first cut is a perfect 90. If that wasn't a perfect 90, that would be my fault for improper setup. But once you get that to 90, you wanna hopefully that all the detents are also perfect. And then this one seems to be at a perfect 45. So let's go rank this guy. My favorite miter gauge is this Jessam one and it's like $300. Super heavy duty, super high quality. It just feels, mm. this is $125. Doesn't feel as heavy duty, but I would say it works just as good, just doesn't have the extension. Would I recommend this? 100% absolutely yes. So let's move this down to number four. We'll move this down to number three, and we're gonna place this at number two. This has to be the track saw track. It feels good. It actually, it, 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 feels, it feels really good. So. You said I could have it, right? You can have one when I'm done. Sick, bro. Again, no instructions. So out of four, three of them did not have instructions, but this one seems pretty obvious. This is going to get attached to my circular saw, and then that rides in the track right there. There's a, a little bit of play, but looks like we can tighten those screws to get some zero play. We don't mind a little bit of play. We don't mind a little bit of play. Okay. Um, shoot. It is not made to work with my saw. So I can't figure out if it is my fault for not looking into it more, or if it is their fault for not making it clear it does not work with regular saws. I'm looking on here. It shows this photo right here. Um, it looks like, it's just made for a much smaller saw. Now that I look at that, that looks like a much smaller saw. Is it my fault? Is it their fault? First of all, no instructions. All right, I don't see anything on here that says you have to use a smaller saw. So I don't feel like it is my fault. So the plate needs to be much bigger than the saw so these little clamps on there can clamp to this piece here. So it, it wouldn't work unless I totally modified the saw, which I'm totally not going to do. Shame on them for not including instructions. Shame on them for not saying what types of saws this, is, this works with. Shame on me for not doing a little bit of more research. We went to Harbor Freight and we got the smallest saw they have. This is a four and a half inch compact circular saw. And unfortunately, it still doesn't fit on this plate. The plate of the saw is too big. Uh, the plate for the track is too small. I can only get three clamps on there and I really need four because it's a little, it's a little loose back here and it's just not safe. The only way around it is if I modified the base of this saw and drove some holes into the base plate so then I have two bolts in here with a lock nut and then two clamps over here on this side. So this should work. So I've got the track here and I'm gonna lay it on top of this board. Now it does have some grippy grips on the bottom, but it's not super grippy. Nothing at all like the Festool one that I have. So I have to use clamps and it does come with some clamps so I can throw one down here. The Harbor Freight saw, for how little it is, it is super loud. Shame on me for not having hearing protection and uh, a dust mask because it is super messy. But we're not talking about the Harbor Freight saw, we're talking about the track. And that worked very well. Now, not nearly as well as like a dedicated track system because, so when I use a dedicated track saw like this, the blade comes all the way out to the very edge of the track. So I can draw my line on the board and then just line up this line with that line that I drew on the board. 
on this one, you can see the way I have it set up is there's about a half inch gap. So you always have to, you draw your line and then add in a half inch on there. So just a little bit more setup. Did it work? Yes. Is it gonna replace my current track saw system? Absolutely not. We're gonna keep the miter gauge at number two. We're gonna keep the roller guides at three, the drill guide at number four. You can disagree with me because I may have made the wrong purchase, but I'm gonna put this at number five. Leave your disgust down in the comments. Before we get to the most expensive tool and the one I'm looking forward to the most, I would like to take you on a journey with me and tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. We're taking a little break, just walking in the backyard. It's 2023, we should all have a website. We need an online presence. A lot of you are just like me. You're a maker, a woodworker, an artist, and you want to make things and share those things with the world. Maybe you want to sell those things. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. You can sell physical items, like the things that you make. You can sell digital items, like PDFs. I sell PDF plans for the stuff that I make. And you can sell merch, I sell merch on my website and Squarespace works with a lot of third-party services so I don't have to print and ship my shirts myself. I use an outside service called Printful. Printful takes care of all the inventory and shipping for me and just makes my life easier. And it's really cool that Squarespace works with these other platforms seamlessly. If you're looking for clients, you can use Squarespace for your portfolio. You can have beautiful image galleries. You can have a contact form where people can contact you. You can have a members only section of your website. You can have a schedule. You can do all these things. You can bring in your social media feeds. I've been using Squarespace for almost 10 years, way before they were a sponsor because it is a great service. It makes my life easier. It allows me to focus on the things that matter. The time that I save, Using Squarespace, I spend working on my backyard. Isn't this, isn't this beautiful? This is so beautiful. Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for allowing me to have fun here in the shop and make these videos possible. Now, let's get back to the most expensive, the biggest tool, the one we've all been waiting for. Let's see if it's worth it, the router lift. Here we go. This is it. This is the big one. This is the one I have been waiting for. Instructions. I always want instructions. Even though I don't read them, I certainly want them. There's no doubt it is heavy. I wonder what shipping was on this guy. All right, it's, um, it's hefty. Two things. One, it comes with a router template and a bit so you can make your own tabletop for this to drop into. I think that's really cool. I don't recall, but I don't think my current Inkra router lift came with a template. It's got double-sided tape already on there, so it tells you in the instructions to rough cut it out with a jigsaw, use the double-sided tape that's included, stick it down on there, put this in your router, and then use this as a template to route that out. You drop it in there. That's pretty cool. Number two, what is not cool is I ordered the wrong lift. <sighs> I didn't even see that there were options. And I got one that is too big for the router that I had. So to save the day, I made my own collar over on the CNC and I'm gonna wrap this around my router and then throw it into the router lift. Should be cool, should be fine. Let's head on over to the router table. So I had to take this homemade collar, drop it onto the router and stick it on here. The wrench that lowers and lifts the whole unit also tightens that around the router, which is very nice. So I'll tighten that up and then we can drop it into our table. But here's the thing. This particular router doesn't fit into the table that I have. I made my table to hold the anchor lift and this one is a little bit bigger and a different size. So in order for me to get this to work, I have to use the template that it came with and route out a bigger hole for this to drop into. I am not going to do that because this router is not going to live here. I'm not going to go and make a whole new router table just to show this off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna clamp this into place. I changed my mind. Things happen very fast around here. I ended up having to get a Craig table because I got a new crazy futuristic router. We can't talk about this yet, but this is going to blow your freaking mind. 
it does some crazy bonker things. So I'm gonna take this futuristic router out of the Craig table and then drop the Banggood one into here. The Banggood lift fits right into here with no modification. So the Banggood lift seems to be a common router plate size and my Incro one seems to be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna take the futuristic router out of here. Again, we'll talk about that in a couple weeks in a future video and we'll drop the Banggood one in here. It almost fits perfectly. It needs a little bit of a little bit of sanding on the edge there. It wants to drop in right there, but not all the way. So this little wrench right here raises and lowers the bit. It works very fast, much faster than the Incra router lift that I have. And then this is the wrench for this lift. This is the big wrench for the Incra, and it's just big and it's always big. I actually prefer this system a lot more. Smaller wrench and it goes up and down a lot faster. Comes with different plates. This particular plate here accepts guide bushings, which is a good thing when you need guide bushings. So I got a round over bit in here. You're gonna notice that my lift is not flush with the table. I haven't calibrated it. I'm not going to calibrate it because this table is for the other router, which is already calibrated. I don't wanna waste a bunch of my time. I just wanted to drop it in here and show this to you. We've gotta rank the last tool. This super high quality, super heavy. I don't know how much shipping costs, but it had to have been quite a bit because it is heavy, it is very well built. Would I recommend this? Absolutely yes. I just went to the website to look up some things and it is now $269.99. When I paid for it, it was $319.02. That's a difference of $49. I don't know why it's $49 cheaper, but it's $49 cheaper, which makes it an even better deal. So highly recommended, just make sure you buy the one that fits the router that you have. Compared to the Incra lift that I have, I don't know what I paid for it five, six years ago, but the Incra lift is now $479, which like I said, I kind of like this one even better and it's way cheaper. I may even like it better than the more expensive Incra router lift just because it's so quick to move up and down it, is, it looks beautiful, it is high end. I am ranking this at number one. We've done two videos that are very similar to this where I bought every ad that was served to me on Facebook and boy, did I get scammed. This will make its new home in my minimalist tiny shop that you'll learn more about later.